Um, right, we're, we're going to do some modeling of, uh, of problems with quadratics today. Um, it's the last topic. I think on the test you have about two questions on, on this kind of stuff. Okay, so we're going to do what's called a maximum minimization problem, and then we're just going to do some general stuff with like, well, you know, you need to think about it in the context of the situation. So just a really quick example. Um, this is one where like the picture is given, the equation is given, so you just need to read it and sort of interpret it from, from the context of the problem. So this one says, some engineering students construct a potato cannon on the roof of a building. Okay, so it says the height above the ground is 8 meters of a potato t seconds after it's shot from the cannon is modeled by this equation. So that means that this equation is giving me the height and my variable t is the time, is the time after being shot. Okay? And they also were nice and they gave us a graph. So it says from the graph, what's the maximum height of the potato and what time for which, uh, for what, and, uh, and what was the time for which it was in the air? All right. So let's take a peek. Um, why, why is the height starting at 10? Yes, yeah, it says they're on a building. So the building's 10 meters above the ground on the roof of a building. And remember, this is H, so this is the height, and then this is the time axis. So um, your vertex right here, that will be your max height, right? And I think that's what they're asking. What was the maximum height of the potato? So in this case, you can just look over what's the maximum height. Looks like 30 meters. 30 meters. So max height, 30 mm -hmm. meters. You should really write in a sentence like the maximum height of the potato was 30 meters or whatever. Um, okay, so that's that. And it says, and what, and what was the time for which it was in the air? So if you look, we start at zero seconds. How long before it hits the ground here at zero? Right, good question. Like what are the units? Um, you go back and it says it's T seconds. Yeah, so that's something you guys would have to worry about. So you would say the total time was four seconds. Done. I mean, that's about as easy as these questions get. They give you the graph, you just interpret the problem, and you're off on your way. Oh, sorry, yeah, you're right. I didn't even, yeah. That's what, that's what that is, 4.5 seconds. Right, 4.5. Yeah, I was right all along. <laughs> what is second form? Yeah, that's a good eye. I didn't know, for some reason I didn't notice that it was past the four. Yeah, no, that's that's nothing. There. Okay. All right. Um, so obviously, like you could get a bazillion questions like this, but different than this. Does that make sense? Right? Like, I could change the situation and, and it'd be a different question. All right. Area problems are another popular one because they're so easy to make. Um, and they're, they're, not, they're not easy to do, but they're about as easy as these problems are going to get, I guess. So those are some problems can be solved by writing and then graphing a quadratic equation. Um, we're not really focusing on, on the graphing, graphing, like, or, you know, factoring solving, like what we've been doing in this class, okay? Um, generally, like you're looking for the vertex. So we'll kind of talk about that when we get there, but generally, like you'll be looking for the vertex to solve the problem, okay? So it says a person has 100 meters of fencing um, to enclose a rectangular garden. So here's my garden. Um, it says, what are the dimensions of the largest possible garden? Okay, so you got 100 meters of fencing. How would you configure it so the length and the width, when you multiply them together, gives you the biggest possible area? Okay? Um, so this is what we call like a maximization problem. A max problem. By the way, in the context of parabolas, if you have a max, is it opening up or down? Right? So... What's going to happen is, is we're going to get the equation of a parabola, and because we're looking for the max, it'll probably be opening down, and we'll be looking for what's, what's at the maximum, what's that special point at the maximum that real worlds are looking for? The vertex. the vertex. Very good. So we'll be looking for the vertex 
of the parabola that we get when we start solving this. Okay? So, like, I'm just trying to help you out, and I'm giving you some, some steps here. Like, you should always sketch a diagram. Okay? And then you should define your variables. So, let the length of the garden be L meters, and its width be W. Right? So, you've got to define your variables. You need to write it down. In grade 12 pre-calc, if you don't do that, you lose a mark. Okay? So, that's a silly way to lose a mark. Okay, so then we can all agree that um, if this is a rectangle, the area is going to be length times width, right? So far, so good? Okay, you need a little bit more information. So all we know is that we have 100 meters of fencing. So that's telling me that, hey, I probably need to work with the perimeter or something like that. Okay, so we're going to use the given information to write an equation for the perimeter, and we'll just call it P meters of the garden. So the perimeter is going to be 100, right? Like, it doesn't matter what I make my length and my width. I have 100 meters of fencing, and I want to use all of it. So does that make sense? So perimeter I know is 100. And I know the formula for perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. You guys agree? Yes. Yeah? OK. So now I'm looking at my area, and I'm like, OK, like I'm, I'm working with the area. But the problem is, is I have two different variables. And I can't solve for stuff if I have two different variables, right? So the key is, okay, go to your perimeter formula, and can you solve for, say, W? Like, solve for one of the variables. It doesn't matter which one you do. So I arbitrarily chose to solve for W, okay? So I took this equation, I subtracted 2L from both sides, and then how do I get rid of the 2 in front of the W? Divide everything by 2. So when I divide this by 2, um, this by 2, and that by 2, I get 100 divided by 2 is 50. Um, negative 2L divided by 2 is L. And I now have an expression for the width in terms of L. You guys agree that it'll make sense? I haven't done like any weird magic or something. It just kind of makes sense. Like we took the perimeter. We decided to solve for W. Now we know that W is 50 minus the length. Yeah? Now, we can go back, and we can substitute this in. So we're going to sub into area equals length times width. And let's see what happens here. So now I know that, hey, W is 50 minus L. So now I know area is the length times, use brackets, 50 minus L. And remember, we are expecting some sort of quadratic. So when I FOIL this out, I'm hoping that I'm going to get one of these very Well, I'm going to get the variable squared. So let's see. So area equals, distribute this into the brackets. So it's 50L minus, what's L times L? L squared. L squared. Is that the equation of a quadratic? Yes. Is it opening down? How, yes, it is. How do you know it's opening down? Because the squared term has a negative? Yes. yes, exactly. So it's starting to turn into what I was expecting. If it's a maximization problem, when you solve and you get your quadratic, it should be opening down. So I'm like, okay, I'm doing something right. So like, now what? To get my answer, I need the vertex. What, what does this all represent? Like, if my variable's L, like, when I go graph this thing, I'm, we're not going to graph it, by the way, but... When I go graph it, what's going to be on my x-axis? What did I define L to be? Go back in your work. What's L? Step two, what's L? It's the length of the garden. So when you have an equation, um, this is your x variable. In this case, it's L. So this would be the length. What's the y-axis? Ah, the y. Very good. You guys are smart. The y area, or sorry, the y axis is the area. So when I get my vertex, so my vertex will be what? Like normally your vertex is the x coordinate, y coordinate. But in this problem, x is length, so the x value that I get would be the length. And what would the y value of the vertex represent? It represents the area. So does it make sense? that I'll be looking for the vertex, like the maximum, because this will be the biggest area, and this would represent the length that gives it to us. Does that make sense? Yes. 
Very good. So it's sneaky. So when you take, like you guys know this stuff, but everything we did was always with x and y, so it never really meant much. But in the context of this problem, length is the x variable and the area is the y variable. So it's important to realize that. And part of it, part of you realizing it is you defining your variables and then thinking. Okay? So how are we gonna, um, how can we, um, how can we get the vertex of this thing easily? There's two methods I can think of to get the vertex. So what can we do? This is sort of review. Yes, you could complete the square, right? Completing the square would give it to you in standard form, right? And, and can we get the vertex from standard form? Yeah, what's another way, and this is the easier way, I think, in this case, to get the vertex? Factor it, yes, and then? So when you say factor, what, what, we're, what are we really doing when we factor it? Like get the x-intercepts? Yeah, so get the x-intercepts. I shouldn't call it x-intercepts because it's actually the l-intercepts. But you guys know what I mean, right? So we factor it, and then what? How do we get the, the x value of the vertex? x plus 2 plus x plus 1. Yes, yes, yes. Would that give us the x value of the vertex? Right, and we already realized that finding the vertex gives us the maximum area. So I think in this case, well, I think in this case it just looks like, in this case it'll be easier to, to do that, to factor. Because look at this thing. How, how do I factor that? What can you pull out? L, L right? B between 50 and negative one, I can just pull out a one, but between L and L squared, I can pull out an L. So I get 50 minus L. Now what? Zero product property, exactly. So you're gonna solve this one equal to zero. So that one just solves itself. And you solve this one equal to zero. So you get L equal 50. And we're setting it equal to zero because we're finding the intercepts, right? So the area would be zero, okay? So here we go, here's my two L intercepts. Now I can find the L, the L value of the vertex, right? By using that formula there. So L is, um, I'm just gonna write L1 plus L2. So you have to modify all your equations to use the right variables. If you don't do that, you'll lose like half a mark. So one of them was zero, the other one was 50 divided by two. So the L value of my vertex is 25. And at this point, as I'm talking about a length, what were the units in the question? Meters, okay, so I should say the length that maximizes it is 25. Now they want to know the dimension, so where do I get my width? This is why it's important to have organized work. I, I'm pretty sure somewhere I had an expression for width. Ah, the width was 50 minus W. So we're going to go there and we're going to write, okay. Uh, kind of spazzing out a bit on me today. So width is 50 minus length. So the width is 50 minus 25. There. So the width is 25 meters. All right. So what's the, uh, the magic numbers that maximize the area? It's actually a square, not a rectangle. But you would go 25 meters for everything. Does that add up to 100? What's the area? What's 25 times 25? I think it's 625. I think. Is that right? I'm probably horribly wrong. Uh, 20 times 20 is 400, so maybe I'm close. Yeah. So, can someone give me double check? Yeah, thanks. So meters squared. So you try any other combination that adds up to 100, um, and you'll never get anything bigger than 625. Okay? Yeah? No, a rectangle is um, a square is a special case of a rectangle. Yeah, so it's kind of a little sneaky like that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, squares are just rectangles that have the same length and width. <laughs> I know it's it's kind of silly. Yeah. So that's kind of a hard question. Like just really quickly, like if we reflect back, there's a lot of there's a lot of steps. Okay, 
Like you got to sketch, you got to define your variables, you got to come up with an equation. We had to go to a second equation and solve for the width, and then we had to go substitute that into the area, and then and then we're back into quadratics. Okay. So can you imagine that we could do every single possible question that would have to do with areas? It's just impossible. But in our exercises, we have a couple, and we generally don't stray too far away from from what from what we do in the notes. Okay. But can you maybe expect that it, it, there's a little twist? Possibly. Not always. Some questions are hard to add a little twist to, but... Okay? Scientists solve problems. So, like, if you want to be a scientist, you're going to solve problems that don't have a solution. There's no answer key to look at. Yeah. Welcome to grade 11 pre -cal. Okay. I got to be more motivational. Hey, it's Halloween. I'll give you guys candy tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. Why not today? Because, I did. why are you guys complaining? <laughs> did I, tell, I think I told Jasmine this. My kid woke up at four in the morning and came to me and was like, he's like, I want a cookie. I was like, what? He's like, I want a cookie. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this. We were talking about having a cookie before you went to bed. And he's like, yeah, I want a cookie. So I made him say please, and then I went and got him a cookie because I wasn't gonna argue with him at four in the morning. So I think he's doing it on purpose. I think he's realized like if I ask for things in the middle of the night, I just get them because I don't want to argue with him at four in the morning. So then he ate a cookie at four in the morning. Hey, anyway. all right. They were homemade cookies. I'm, I'm actually maybe I'll bake some cookies for you guys. I, I, I just discovered that I'm, a, that I'm pretty decent at baking cookies. All right, I'm not editing that out of the video. Um, okay, this is, the same, this is the same question, just um, we just graphed it. Um, I really don't think we have time to look at the graph, but the important thing that I, that I wanted to highlight again was the parabola looks like this, and this is your area, and this is your length, and this is the maximum, and the maximum was length, comma, area. And we already talked about that, okay? So, let's do uh, another question type. So this is question type three. So we looked at one where they gave us the graph and the equation. We looked at a maximum, minimum problem with areas. Now we're gonna do problems involving numbers. That's kind of silly because every problem involves numbers, but this is sort of a very specific question. Um, I do believe you can expect it on your test like a question like this. And like, there's an unlimited number of ways that I can give you this question, but the basic gist of it is the same. So you have two numbers, and then I say something like, oh, they have a sum of 20. Um, and then does the sum of their squares have a maximum or minimum value? Determine this value and the two numbers. So it's like, huh? Where do I start? Where did we start on the last question? We had to do what? Sketch a diagram. There's really no diagram I think you can sketch here. What was the next step? Define variables. Yes, define your variables. Okay, so we need to define variables. I don't know why it's acting so funny today. So how are we gonna define your variables? Well, I don't know what my numbers are, so I'm just gonna say let x and y be the two numbers. I'm going to be lazy and use the number symbol. Right? So we'll just make it up. Like, I don't know the numbers. Let's just call them X and Y. But then it's crazy because once I have them defined like that, then I can start going through the question and I can start writing some stuff down. Two numbers have a sum of 20. Well, how do I write that using my two variables? X plus Y equals 20. Excellent. So X plus Y equals 20. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, I need another equation because there's another thing. It says, does the sum of their squares have a maximum or minimum? So sum means add. Um, what does squares mean? Square them. Square them. Yeah. So if I go x squared plus y squared, that's equal to, I'm just going to call it s for the sum. So the sum of their squares, x squared plus y squared, is it a maximum or a minimum? Well, I don't know. But when you say max or min, like now we're talking about quadratics. 
So what, what are they really asking if they say, is it a max or a min? Like in terms of like the parabola itself. Does it go up or down? Yeah, is it opening up or down? Well, am I ever going to solve this if I have two variables in there? No. So I could, but could I use my first equation to say solve x or y, and then I could substitute it in here? Yeah. By the way, where does this concept come from? From grade 10. You guys did a whole unit. No one ever remembers it, but do you guys remember systems of linear equations? Yeah, you guys did this sort of stuff, but with just lines, right? Like you'd have two lines, you'd look for where they intersect. Now we're just doing it with quadratics. Okay, so anyways, solve um, number one for what should we do? Uh, let's solve it for, for y. It doesn't matter which one you pick, you just gotta pick something and go. Okay, oh my goodness. So here we go. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, all right, that's cool. I don't know why it's doing this today. Okay, I'm just gonna do it here. So um, we got x plus y equals 20. So we're gonna solve it for y. So I'm gonna subtract x from both sides. So y is 20 minus x, make sense? All right, if I knew x and I wanted to know y, I would go 20 minus x, make sense? And now you're gonna sub into equation two. Equation two was this one. That x squared plus y squared was equal to s, the sum. So now I know, I'm gonna switch to a less thick marker. Now I know that y is equal to this, so I can write x squared plus, use some brackets, because it's y squared, so 20 minus x squared, and that's equal to the sum. Now I just gotta work out this quadratic, right? We got a group or like terms. So we're gonna have to FOIL, FOIL group like terms. Right? We need to see the equation of the parabola so we can see if it's a max or a min, right? That's what they wanted to know, is it a max or a min? So I'll be looking for which value? Starts with an A. Oh, it is the A value, yeah, okay. So let's FOIL it out. Um, 20. So remember, when you have this, I think for most of us, it's important to write out what you're doing. I didn't do that. Okay, so it's important to write out what you're doing. Like when you're squaring a binomial, it means you're doing that, right? Right. So you can foil it. So x squared plus so 20 times 20, 400. And now I'm going to do a little bit in my head. 20 times negative x gives me negative 20x. Negative x times 20 gives me negative 20x. So how many x's do I have in total? Negative 20x subtract negative 20x. Yeah, I misspoke, but yeah, we have minus 40x, yeah? And then you go negative x times negative x, you get plus x squared. There. All right, now I can group some like terms. So I got x squared plus x squared, so I get 2x squared. It's going to write in the order we're used to. Subtract 40x um, plus 400. That's equal to the sum. I don't want that to look like a negative. It's just a, a mark on the screen there. Okay, so this sort of this answers one of the questions. Is it a max or a min value? So this parabola is opening up because A is positive, so it's a uh, minimum. But they also wanna know what the two numbers are, okay? So we're looking for the minimum value. Where do we find the minimum value? The vertex. Yeah, the vertex, right? We're always so interested to know what the vertex is. So, and when I'm doing my vertex, it's x, it's, ah, sorry, what's the y value in this case? It's not y, but what was s? S was the sum. So when I find the vertex, this x value represents one of my numbers. Then I can go back to my first equation and figure out the y value, yeah? Does it make sense? That, that's probably the trickiest part, is understanding that. So how am I gonna get the x value of my vertex here? It's the same answer as before. What are the two strategies we can do? We can complete the square or we can factor it and then use that formula. So 
I don't know, like it's whatever, whatever you think is fastest. I have a greatest common factor I can pull out, which when I do that gives me this, which I, I look at this and I'm like, well that's easy to factor, I think. Two numbers that multiply to 200 but add to 20? I don't know. Is it easy? Four times five? No. <laughs> Sorry, four times 50 is what I was thinking. Uh, one, uh, two times a hundred, three, I don't know. Maybe it's not so. Can we think of two numbers? I mean, or we can just complete the square. Either way, to complete the square, you have to pull out the two, right? So what do you guys want to do? I'm feeling lazy. Anybody? Nobody gonna get the two numbers? Chen, not even Chen? I would really like to factor it. Is it six and something? No. Somebody using a calculator? This is why I have no memory left on my phone, just these five minute pauses in the video. <laughs> Maybe maybe it's not factorable. How would we know? We we could do the discriminants. Maybe there are no maybe there are no x-intercepts. I will use this as a teachable moment. So you can quickly calculate the discriminant. Um, so uh, b squared to be four hundred minus four times a, which is remember you got to use this format. Ooh, so I just screwed up. So if I'm doing the discriminant, I need to use this. So my B value is actually 40. What's 40 squared? Is it 1,600? 1,600. 1,600? Minus 4 times A, which is 2 times C. So what's that? That's 8. 8 times 4 is 32. So my discriminant is what? Less than 0, equal to 0, greater than 0? Less than 0. Right? Like you got 1,600, subtract like 3,200. So what does it mean? Yeah, there's no roots, which means that I have to complete the square. Like, do you think that could happen to you on the test? Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah it could freaking happen to you. Like, are you not equipped to deal with it? Like, you know how to calculate the discriminant. So, it doesn't take long to calculate the discriminant. Um, yeah, otherwise we would have been here for a while trying to factor something that we can't factor, thinking that we just weren't finding the numbers. So, okay, let's complete the square. It's great. I hate completing the square. So here we go. Use the square brackets. First term minus the second term. Leave yourself some room. Plus 200. Leave yourself some room equals the sum. Okay, take that number. The 20. Divide by 2. Sorry, it's negative 20. Divide by 2. Square it. What do you get? Negative 10 squared. So you get 100. So 100 is the magic number. I'm going to add 100 in here. To make to keep it equal to 0, I need to subtract 100. OK? Oh my god. Oh, it's because I clicked there's a button, I think. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Go away. OK, hang on. I don't, I don't know what I did. I clicked on there. OK, here we go. So I got two times. This is now a perfect square trinomial. So what's the number that you write here? Negative 10. Negative 10. Where is it? Right here. So what was this number? Okay. Squared. 200 minus 100 is 100. Okay. Now to completely, and that's equal to the sum, to be completely done, I'm going to distribute that in there, and I'm going to go multiply that there. So I get 2 times x minus 10 squared plus 200 equals the sum. So the vertex is what? 10 comma 200. This is the sum. This is the x value. Okay, so x is 10. Remember from before our equation for y? This is why you have to be so organized. x plus y equals 20. 
I had it solve for y, that y was 20 minus x. So y is 20 minus 10, y is 10. So what are the two numbers, 10 and 10? Perfect. Glad we did all that work. So these questions could be a lot of marks. We sort of just keep them, I think, at three or four marks. Can't remember. I think this question is like three marks. So like the mark breakdown, like you can still do pretty decent even if you don't solve it. Like I think it's like it's like one mark to get the equations, and then it's like one mark to sort of um, to substitute it in and get so far, and then it's like one mark for the answer for the correct answer. So you could screw it up pretty bad um, and still get two out of three with like very little work, right? Like come up with the two equations, um, solve one, substitute it into the other, and you're sort of at like one and a half or two out of three. Yeah. I remember my mom was helping me mark a grade 12 pre-calc exams and she was going mental because she's like, how is this like the person would like, like the way the, the answer key works is like sometimes you get a lot of marks for not actually understanding the question a lot. And I just remember she's going mental over that. I had to give her like a lorazepam or something. <laughs> Calm down, mother. <laughs> okay, questions? No? Hopefully my mom doesn't see that. Okay, we got one more question. Yeah, so we have lots of time. Um, problems that have an increase or a decrease. Um, so we sort of went over four question types today. Like you're only going to see probably two of them show up on the test. Th this has been a favorite in the past. What is what? It's really tiny. Yeah. Well, get your get your magnifying glasses out. <laughs> okay. Ready? So here we go. Um, you guys can't see it at all. I can try to make it bigger. I can see it. Because you're right next to the board. Yeah. Well, you know, but you guys have it in front of you. Yeah, it's real yeah. small. Yeah, it's really small. Is that better? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Is that better? It's like, be your mom. Is that good? <laughs> I don't know. I, can, I, I have it the same size as you guys. It's fine. You guys are just whiners. I was talking to, to Miss Metric about it. I was like, are the grade 11s this year like the whiniest ever? And she's like, yes. And I was like, okay, so not just me. All right. Are you whining? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm whining about your whining, yes. So I'm allowed to. Right. All right, here you go. <laughs> Maybe I just don't do this question. Maybe I go sit and drink my coffee for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I am thirsty though. Coffee's a thirst quencher, right? Hey, fun fact. You know how they advertise milk as like, um, oh, like drink lots of milk because you get lots of calcium and have healthy bones? Right? You guys, you guys know that? It's completely wrong. You get more calcium from broccoli than you do from milk. Because of the way you're... Yeah, milk is still good, don't get me wrong. Just if you're drinking it because you're like, yeah, I'm gonna get my calcium, I'm like, no, nah, I should be eating broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> are my horns like. <laughs> they're, they're all sideways. <laughs> like, yeah, they're like. Why did this happen? <laughs> okay, look, I'm really self conscious about my crooked horns, okay? Ooh, I like that outline. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Math is coming. Hey. <laughs> okay. You better do this in the video. I don't see why not. Okay, it's Halloween, so why not? Okay. Um, okay, let's get rocking and rolling on this question. So, a student, this is this is gonna be. You guys are gonna love this. <laughs> uh, really, really study this one. I, I feel like this is the one. Uh, a student parking pass costs twenty dollars. Um, at this price, 150 students will purchase passes, okay? So $20, 150 people will buy them. Um, maybe someone, like, you know, took a year of data or something and they established that's roughly what it is. For every $5 increase in price, 
20, few, 20 fewer students will purchase passes. So two questions, what's the price of a parking pass that will maximize the revenue? So as soon as you see that, you know it's like a quadratic. And if it's a maximization, is it opening up or down? Down. That's just good to know. You keep in mind like your quadratic should have a negative um, squared value. Okay. And then what is the maximum revenue? So when, when we do this, um, we, we got like two variables, right? Like we need to sort of say like, um, how are we going to say this? Um, how are we going to say this? Do, 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 do. Uh, okay, so we're going to have something like this. We're going to say like, okay, the profit. Actually, I don't like that. What's the word they use in the question? Not profit, like revenue? Yeah. Okay, so let's come up with just an equation for revenue. So we can say the revenue is equal to what? Like how would I find my revenue? I got, what are my variables, I guess? Price and how many people buy it, right? So it's kind of like, what's the price? So price per ticket, I guess. That's one bracket. And it's like the other bracket is, well, like a um, number of students who buy. I'm just going to write number of students. So that kind of helps. So I'm trying to figure out what this is going to look like because I can't have two variables. Like I can't have like, you know, um, you know, whatever, something for tickets and something for students because I'm going to have to like factor this quadratic at some point. Um, they're talking about like increments, right? Like they say it's twenty dollars. Um, at that price, one hundred and fifty students are going to buy a pass. For every five dollar increase in price, twenty fewer students are going to are going to buy something, right? So it's kind of like this. Um, let Let's think of it this way: my price is twenty dollars. Um, how many students? One hundred and fifty. Right? Um, what if I go 20 plus 5, right? So if I increase it by 5, what happens to the students? It goes 150 minus, it goes 150 minus 20, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What if I do it again? So what if I go 20 plus 5 times 2, like 2 increments of 5? What happens to the students? It's 150 minus 20 times 2. Now I'm sort of writing it funny, right? Instead of just saying, well, it would be $10 and it would be $40. But that's because I'm trying to like generalize this equation, right? Um, so the way I see it is this right here, if I do it again, what's it going to be? Should we do one more? It'd be 3 increments. And then it would be 150 minus 20 times 3. So what I see here is I'm like, ah, that's the thing that keeps changing in my formula, right? Like right here, you could think of it as being zero. Right here, it's five times one, 20 times one, five times two, 20 times two. So that is my variable that's changing. So that's like my x. So I'm gonna say, let x be the number of increments. And now my equation looks like this. I got revenue equals, so it's 20 plus 5 times x, right? I don't know how many increments it's going to be to maximize the revenue. And then it's 150 minus 20 times x. I don't know. But I know that these two things are tied together, right? If I increment the price by $5 once, I lose 20 students one time. So there's my quadratic. So now you can, well now it's up to you. We need the vertex, right? Yeah. yeah. Are we in a good place where like, do I wanna like foil it out and complete the square and all this stuff? No. no. Could I just like factor it? Like get the x values of the intercepts and use my equation? Like this one here? That would honestly be the easiest way to do it. So let's do that. Really quickly, when you FOIL this out, do you see how the x term and the x term, when you multiply them together, you get negative something? Right? Like, I'm just double checking, like, is this parabola opening down? Yeah, yeah my a value is going to be negative. I, I don't know where all these little marks are coming from, like. Who's there? 
I don't know, like it's kind of acting it's funny today. Something's going on. It's Halloween. It's spooky. Okay, here we go. So let's use a zero product property. And we'll go 20 plus 5x equals 0. We'll go 150 minus 2x equals 0. Okay, you guys start solving. I'm gonna... <clears throat> So what do we get? We get um, 5x equals negative 20, so we get x equals negative 4, and then over here we get 2x equals 150, so we get x equals 75. So those are our intercepts. They don't really mean much. Well, actually, what, what, what do these mean? This would be when the revenue is zero, okay? But so we're interested in the vertex, so we're going to go find the x value of the vertex. So we're going to go negative 4 plus 75 divided by 2. So what is that? 71 divided by 2. So is it 30 and a half? Hello? Did I make a mistake? Yeah. I did? Isn't it oh. minus 20x over 2x? Oh my goodness. Oh my word. Yes, that's a big mistake. Okay, so that's going to change that. So yeah, over here, sorry, I made a mistake. I, I wrote 2x instead of 20x. So, sorry. Good job, you guys. I did that on purpose to see who gets bonus candy tomorrow. Woo! Okay. Just remind me, I'll give you bonus candy. Okay, so I was solving this equal to zero. I moved, I moved that over there, so I got 20x equals 150, and then divide both sides by 20, so what the heck do I get? 7.5? Yeah. Okay. All right. Wait, isn't that 20? It's negative 20 and negative 150. What? Oh, um... It's negative, but then I moved it to the other side. Yeah, so I did two things. so right. I moved it over to this side, and then I just switched the two sides of the equation, right? Or if you, you could do it the other way, but if you But should we not negatives. get seven and a half? Yes, anyway. you get seven and a half either way. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Because one's just two negatives. Yes. So we're good? Yeah, guys, I will often move like the negative thing over, and then I'll put my variable on that side, like, like okay, I, I feel like I don't want anyone to get confused, so I did this. Like I move this over there. And then does it matter if I do this equals that or that equals that? No, so that's what I did here. Because I'm just used to having my variable on the left side. Yeah, okay. I don't want anyone confused over, this, over that. Okay, so you get, what do you get here? Three and a half, what's half of three and a half? 1.75. 1.75. So what does that re represent? It's 1.75 increments. Now, I don't know if we're allowed to have 1.75 increments or not. Um, the question seems to be a little vague. Like, if you can only do it, like, they're only going to do $5 increases in price. I'm going to assume that, um, like, I can do 1.75 increments, okay? So, because it's asking, uh, what's the price? Well, how would I find the price? The price per ticket was my first bracket. This is the price. So I'll just go calculate it, right? This is price, and this is ticket. Uh, this is student, sorry. And then if I multiply them together, what would that give me? The revenue. The revenue. Okay, they just want to know what's the price that will maximize the revenue. So price was 20 plus 5x. So 20 plus 5 times 1.75. And apparently, in my notes that I did it, I got uh, 2875. I don't know if you guys can confirm. Excellent. So that's the price that maximizes the revenue. And then they wanted to know what is the maximum revenue. So this is A and B. What is the maximum revenue? Well, my formula was revenue equals this times this is minus 20x, right? So I can just substitute an x. I already know that from this bracket I get 28.75, right? So I can save myself some time. 
but I will go and substitute in 1.5, 1.75 right here. And then you guys can try it out on your calculator. Uh, your final answer for revenue. One, one uh, okay, that's, that's different from what I got. Can we get some confirmation? Three, 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 three thousand? Yes, that's what I got, so I'm going to go with that. Yeah, 3,306.25. I'm going to attack a question on how many students maximize the revenue. How would I figure that out? Which bracket do I use? 150 minus 20. Yes. Yeah, 150 minus the 20x. Someone quickly let me know. When you plug in 1.75, because I could ask any of those questions, right? 115. 115? And it, did it work out exactly to 115? Okay. What if I had 115.4? You would go down. No, no, you would go up. You can't have. I know it keeps like. No, because you still have that student, but like you can't have a fourth. So you would go up. Yeah. I, I would actually accept you rounding up or rounding down, I suppose. But you can't leave it as 115.4 as much more. Yeah. I would say it would make more sense to like round up. Like you, you need at least 115.4. You can't have that, so you need at least 116. But just, just a small detail. Okay. So those questions are hard. Hey? Like you guys aren't used to doing questions that could take you five minutes per question, right? Welcome to grade 11 pre-calc. I, I, like, I don't know what else to say. Like, we're getting you ready for grade 12 pre-calc. Um, it is what it is. Um, at university, I took a third year um, physics course. It was electricity, electricity and waves. And it was like ridiculous. It was like, calculate the charge of like an infinite line in space beside an infinite sphere stacked on top of my face. And like, I'm just making stuff up. But like, literally the questions were like that. And I remember like, the first assignment, the, the prof was like, so I'm just gonna assign you one question to hand in. And I was like, just one question? Like, yes, and it's gonna take me like, no time. And like the one question, I kid you not, as I remember this to this day, it was 20 pages of work. I'm not kidding. It was 20 pages of work on loose leaf to get to the answer. I'm not kidding you. And I remember handing it in and being like, now I understand why you just did one question. And he's like, yeah, it's a lot of work. Anyway. Did you get it right? I did. Sure. The nice thing about having 20 pages is you just know when you're right because like it just doesn't work. Well, I mean if you missed a decimal place or something. Oh, yeah, there was that risk. Okay. I did. Anyways. 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 Am I flexing again? No. Yeah, yeah. I handed 20 pages of work for one question. I'm so good. Stop the recording. <laughs>